So, the PlayStation 3 released onto the market November 11, 2006. Fast forward 7 years to 2013 and we have the PS4 releasing on November 15th. Skip ahead to where we are now when you have the PS4 Pro dropping in November. If you kept up with the math, that's 3 years into the PS4 life and it's getting an upgrade. Why? Two overtimes. Wow, I've been recording stereo this whole time, bro. All right, whatever. Ah, it's part of the process. We could do this. I could do it. <clears throat> Technology is ever growing, and at the speed it progresses, it renders what we have today obsolete by tomorrow. So that goes without saying that gaming is growing to an extent where consoles can't keep up. They're not the industry standard anymore. So I drew this chart to give you a visual of what. I of what I'm saying. So yeah, consoles are stagnant and only get upgraded every seven years when it's time for an overall update between performance, ease of use, and service. See, PCs don't face that same problem because they're adaptive. You upgrade when you want to, not when you can. And if you compare the prices spent on each investments, PCs actually come out cheaper. In this day and age, PC gaming is a standard, but that obviously doesn't mean that there's no room for consoles, right? The main problem with consoles are that they're static. How can they keep up and grow with the times? Sony and Microsoft came forth and answered this question by introducing new systems. Because of cheaper parts and reduced cost of manufacturing, consoles get a redesign of fixed noted issues such as bad airflow, loud fans, how bulky they are, and make them better, hence the slim models. But now we're seeing major upgrades in the specs too, in turn making a whole new console. Sony announced the PS4 Pro and Xbox previewed their Project Scorpio. If you go back and watch the Project Scorpio announcement, they tell you their plans for the new Xbox, an 8 core processor rendering at 60 Hz. It even has 6 teraflops of GPU power. I had to google this shit cause I was so lost to be honest but if you read in between the lines of that trailer they're saying we need to be as strong as PCs but still have the luxury of being a console. They even said a console with no boundaries or limits. Why else would they market the Scorpio with terms they know damn well we don't fully understand. Look the thing is you can't adopt a new lifestyle and continue your old habits. It's counterproductive. That's like you wanting to be fit so you work out but you don't change your diet. See what I'm saying? Consoles can't grow with the times. The only way I see this working is if the consoles become somewhat modular. If you're not familiar with the modular concept, what it is is a design that subdivides a system into smaller parts called modules or skids that can be separately created and then used in different systems. Consoles sell themselves off convenience factor alone. Just take it out of the box, plug and play, throw in some exclusive titles and branding and boom, a console. But I think we reached a point in gaming where that convenience needs to have some complexity. Hear me out. What if the PS4 Pro was instead a module console? Meaning that what you buy is an open PS4 but over time you upgrade the console with parts officially released by Sony. The idea seems redundant because if you want to buy parts and build a better gaming rig, why not just get a PC? And that's where the gray area starts to shade. You want a PC but don't want a PC. You don't want to spend massive amounts of money but you spend more money on consoles. You don't care about performance and specs but you will trade in your current console to upgrade to the new one given the chance. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to knock console gamers for these known contradictions because I'm I'm a console gamer myself. I mean, I have a PC that I'm currently investing in over time, but all of my gaming is done mainly on my PS4 or my 3DS. The point I'm trying to make is that a module console will very much be appreciated in a gaming world today. Why? One, it'll have the convenience factor. The base model will have everything you need so you just plug and play, so if you're just a casual gamer, you're already satisfied. Two, over time, instead of Sony or Microsoft releasing an updated version of the console, all they would have to do is release a new CPU, video card, maybe even some special parts like a disk drive that enables backwards compatibility. This way cost of production will be low and more people will be willing to buy. I'm not a business analyst so don't quote me on this shit. 3. It would be the perfect segue into the PC gaming world. With a module console you can learn the basics of what goes into building a rig. You will learn just enough to decide whether or not you want to make the jump to PC gaming. Look, obviously there's flaws within what I'm presenting. I just wanted to discuss an idea that's been floating around in my head for some time. I do think that consoles that we know today will be becoming a thing of the past by the end of the decade but ultimately, who knows. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like and share this video. That be greatly appreciated and if you haven't already subscribe you know just do your boy that favor yeah i'm jess stream chris and as always i'm out <laughs>